Hello everyone, my name is Mikio. In this video, I will give you a quick overview of a Python library, web3.py. By the end of this video, we will install it on a local computer and understand how to use the basic functionality such as sending ether, deploying a smart contract, and interacting with it in Python. So what is web3.py? Web3.py is a Python library for interacting with Ethereum. Simply put, Ethereum is a collection of computers or nodes running a specific software or Ethereum client communicating with each other over the internet. Therefore, if we want to interact with Ethereum from our Python programs outside the Ethereum network, we need to connect to one of the Ethereum nodes first. Web3.py is a library to make it easy to connect to an Ethereum node and interact with the Ethereum network. There are several ways to connect to an Ethereum node using Web3.py, such as IPC, if an Ethereum node is running on the same machine, HTTP or WebSocket. However, in this video, we will use a local Ethereum network provided by the library called eTester. It is basically a test tab designed for local development and testing purposes. It is integrated with web3.py, so it is a good option for us to see how web3.py works. We also use Jupyter Notebook in this video. It is probably not the best way to develop web3 applications, but again, it is a good option to explore web3.py and demonstrate how it works. Firstly, create a virtual environment and install these packages using pip. Open a terminal and execute the command like this. Then, install the packages using the pip command. When I install web3tester, web3.py is downgraded for some reason, so double check the version. This is not the latest version, so just try upgrading it. Now the latest version of web3.py has been installed. Start Jupyter Notebook by running the command like this. The default web browser will automatically open the Jupyter Notebook homepage. Create a new notebook using the Python 3 kernel. As mentioned before, we will use a test Ethereum network running in the local environment for demonstration purposes. To connect to the local Ethereum network, we can use web3.ethereum tester provider like this. We get through, which means the connection is successful. Ethereum tester provider creates 10 accounts which we can use to interact with the network. We can find the accounts like this. We can check the ether balance of each account by running the method get underscore balance. 
As you can see, each test account has 1 million Ether. These are obviously not real Ether, so they are not worth anything in the real world, just in case you are wondering. We can send Ether from one account to another by using the method send underscore transaction. For example, we can send 5 Ether from the first account, account 0, to the second account, account 1, like this. The output is the transaction hash. We will use it to get more details about the transaction later, but first, we can confirm that balances have been changed. The first account has 5 Ether less than before, and the second account has 5 Ether more. The first account has slightly less than 999,995 Ether, 21,000 way less to be precise, because it pays the transaction fee when making the transaction. You can check the details of the transaction by the method get underscore transaction underscore receipt with the transaction hash returned by the method send transaction earlier in this video. You can see that the gas used value is indeed 21,000, which is the base fee for a transaction in Ethereum. You can find the gas price like this. As you can see, it is set to one way, so the total transaction fee was 21,000 way. Now let's see how the smart contract deployment works using web3.py. First, we need a smart contract. In this video, we will use this simple smart contract which I have taken from the Solidity documentation. On Jupyter Notebook, save this code as storage.sol in the same directory as the notebook. Then go back to the notebook. Before deploying the smart contract, we need some preparations, such as setting up the compiler and compiling the smart contract. Let's look at the steps one by one. First, import the Solidity compiler solcx and install it. Then compile the smart contract storage.sol, which we, we just saved earlier. You can see the ABI, Application Binary Interface, and BIN, Binary Code, of the compiled code, which we will use in the next step. Finally, we can deploy the smart contract by the method contract. When this method is called without specifying address, it will create a new smart contract like this. You can find the address of the deployed smart contract by looking up the transaction using the transaction hash returned by the contract method, which looks like this. Now that we have deployed the smart contract and got the address, we can use the smart contract. First, create a contract object using the method contract with the address and ABI like this. The smart contract has two functions, get and set. Let's use the method call to execute the function get and find the current value. We can see that the current value is zero. Now let's try the function set to update the storage value from zero to 100. As this function changes the state of the blockchain, we use the function transact, which will send a new transaction like this. We can check the stored value by running the function get again like this. 
we can confirm that the value has been updated to 100. In this video, we looked at the basic functionality of Web3.py, a Python library for interacting with Ethereum. First, we installed Web3.py and the related packages and set up the environment. Then, we connect it to the local test Ethereum network, explore the accounts and balances, and send some ether from one account to another. Lastly, we compiled a smart contract, deployed it to the local test Ethereum network, and executed the functions in the smart contract. I hope this video has been a helpful introduction to Web3.py. You can find more about Web3.py in the Web3.py documentation. That's it for this video. My name is Mikio, and thank you for watching.